Ginevra is the artist. She is the one responsible for Scissor Storm Cut Paper Art. This is something unusual, a little different. You can see some of the design there. And actually, there she is working on the arts. How did you get started in doing something like this? And I guess explain to us a little more about this. I think it was probably when I was about six and they gave me a pair of scissors and said, okay, make some snowflakes or some paper dolls for third grade, you know, uh, very early. And I guess the tools just felt natural for me. And um, in the last couple years, I've really been pushing myself to see how far I could take paper cutting how intricate I can make my designs and how complicated I can get with compositions. Um, I work freehand, so I sometimes will look at a photo for reference or make a sketch, but I'm cutting from my own head and from my imagination and creating the pieces as I see them in my mind's eye. Uh, and I'm going to just zoom over because right now there's some people looking over at your beautiful artwork that you do just by doing this. It's funny you mentioned the snowflakes because I can remember too as a kid like folding the paper in half and doing this and making little cuts and all of a sudden you get a great snowflake out of it. But this is this is a lot more than that, right? I mean there's there's a lot more skill involved than just doing that. Well thank you. Lots of practice. And you can talk while I'm looking here because oh, some of the sure. stuff that you're you're cutting and all. Yeah. And there's something really cool. Just practicing some organic shapes and exploring some sort of undersea textures there. And you can actually make some money doing something like this. I mean, it's, it's terrific. You know, it's lovely to discover that people appreciate a great variety of different art forms. So. When did you decide this is something I'm going to do? Now this is your. We're at Florida SuperCon here at the Miami Beach Convention Center. This is your first time at a SuperCon, uh -huh. but you've done other events. And what events were so, they? So I have. I've shown my work at Art Walks and other arts type exhibitions. Um, uh, Murakami Japanese Peak Gardens uh, has a wonderful event. Their Hatsume Fair, Spring Festival. Um, I had a great time there this year. Those kinds of shows and events are really fun, and I get great response from people. When was it, though, that it was like, yeah, I'm going to start doing these at different events and different activities? I was there something that happened or somebody said, why don't you do this? Oh, actually, I guess I did a symmetrical Yoda piece for a co-worker as a gift. He was actually moving away, and I knew that he loved Star Wars, so I wanted to give him something special, and I had this ability, so he freaked out <laughs> when he saw that piece, and I thought, you know, maybe I'm on to something, and maybe this is something I should really develop and try to share with people. So, uh, the last couple years, I've really been pushing myself, and, um, and it's been terrific. It's been lots of fun. On social media, have you found others that do things like this as well? There are a handful of people, but I've got to be honest with you, most of the other paper artists that I've followed and spoken to work with an X-Acto knife. Um, I think it's pretty unusual for a paper artist to work with scissors and to work in the way that I do. Uh, but there are so many inspiring uh, artists out there who are working in this medium and it's absolutely delightful to get inspiration from their work. What do you like doing most? Is there something you like to do most? What are you doing here? This is just abstract that you're creating? Actually, this is a feather that's taking shape. And I love doing organic subjects because there's some freedom there to create them as they... As you see it in your mind? That's right. And also... Um, you know, if you're if you're doing if you're depicting something mechanical or something, um, shoot, you have to be accurate and precise. Well, no, of course, like even like Starship Enterprise, you really have to know the details on that because especially here, people know exactly what it looks like. Exactly right. Whereas if you're cutting a feather, each one can be different and unique, and. Uh, as long as you're capturing that realism and that detail, they'll be beautiful and each one will be exciting and different. Now I'm going to ask you this, because I thought this was interesting too. So I see you look, a lot of this stuff is black and white, correct? Yes. So I also noticed that you're wearing gray and black. 
<laughs> Was that done by design? <laughs> I sort of have a monochromatic, you know, neutral palette thing going on, you're right. Um, but <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> I could have stood out a bunch more, I guess, if I were wearing red from head to toe. But uh, I, I guess I'm trying to keep it consistent. It goes with with what you do, the decor. So. Wonderful. All right, so now I'm going to go over here. We'll end this just by getting some of the work. So I'm going to get that. Did you purposely pick out pieces too because you were coming to Comic Con? Of course. Of course, the Star Wars stuff, the Studio Ghibli stuff, absolutely. I'm sure you're going to find out this weekend. <laughs> It all looks great. I wanted to ask you too, I'll get this back over to you, but I want to get some of this first. And there's some of this. The thing is with this too, you see there's some of the smaller pieces. Does it take you about how much time would you say it takes you to do certain things? It totally depends on the piece. With the smaller things, with subjects I'm comfortable with and experienced with, they can go fairly quickly. But on a complex piece, on a piece where I've created a composition and I'm trying to execute something, it can be as many as 10 hours. It totally varies. Well, thank you so much. Is there a social media or website for people to go? Absolutely. Etsy.com. Just search for Scissor Storm. I'm also on Instagram uh, and Twitter, Pinterest, the usual. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. At Florida Supercon at the Miami Beach Convention Center. And we're looking at something that's just awesome. It's beautiful, it's well crafted, it's amazing, some artwork, something a little different. It's kawaiiuniverse.com. And now we're gonna get to the artist who actually designs all this. Give us your name, tell us what this is all about. Hey, I'm Valentina of Kawaii Universe, and I specialize in cute design and illustration, but not only cute design, it's HD pop art. We are based in Miami, Wynwood Arts District at the Harold Golan Gallery. And as a local business, what I do is specialize in illustrating and primarily designing and hand-making stickers of all shapes and sizes. Everything is made one by one with lots of cuteness and lots of love. That's and it then, because you mentioned about kawaii. So what is kawaii? So kawaii mean? actually means cute in Japanese, but it also means, you know, light and fun and sweet and so many good positive things. Your passion for this is incredible. What made you decide to go this route for your art? Well, I've always loved art and design and illustration, but I've also had a huge, you know, affinity with anime and films and featured films, you know, where everything is so picturesque and colorful that, you know, I said, well, I love color and being a part of this concept of, you know, breathing and living this animated life. So I started out in marker renderings, but I've always been an artist my whole life, and now I'm making them. You know, I studied industrial design and I love crafting, so I hand make every single sticker. Yes, everything, this is one thing that made we have to talk one, about. Everything is handmade. One by one. And it's very soft. Obviously, this is a visual medium, but the pillows are very soft. Super soft. And you have a great fan base, too, and it keeps growing, which is phenomenal. And you're very interactive with your, with your public. Thank you, yes, yes. We love to see all familiar faces from events that we've done with the youth fair to events that we've done. We've done the Supercon for almost uh, six or seven years now. You know, it's one of our staple uh, collaborations and fun enjoyments. Do you like being different in your art form? Yeah, sure. You know, I think as long as you dedicate yourself to a focus, you're always going to stand out regardless of what it is. So my mission is to just make something fun, beautiful, and cute, and just keeping to the highest quality possible. At this Comic-Con, Florida Supercon, we have the pillows, we have the stick is that mainly what you all, but also you have something else, right? There's yeah, some other things here at the table. Yeah, we have the shirts now today. Uh, it's the first time we're, we're showcasing the shirts. Sushi, Toastmasters, Koi. You can see all of them right there, too. 
That's a good panorama there. That's nice. How have the shirts been doing and what are the people saying about them? You know, them? they love how colorful they are. They love that they can actually wear something that speaks their mind. You know, sometimes you're like, you know, where can I get a sushi? Like, I'm hungry. I want to see, I want to make other people hungry. Like, so everybody's enjoying that. And, you know, it's so different when you get to see them in composites. Usually you get to see an item on its own, like a drum. Here, hold that up, hold that up. The little drum, you know, that's by itself. Or you see, you know. These are all things you've all designed sushi, by hand. This is all, design, all the stickers. HD. The desserts, you know, who wouldn't love desserts on their shirt? You can bombard people with the cuteness or just inspire a smile. That's my main goal with the shirts, you know, wear something positive. Where can people go if they want to check out all your work, all the greatness that you're giving us? So, absolutely. Uh, you can check out Kawaii Universe on Instagram. It's at Kawaii Universe. That's K-A-W-A-I-I -I Universe. Regular spelling on Instagram. Or you can uh, like us on Facebook. That's Kawaii Universe Studio. It's slash Kawaii Universe Studio is our link. And if you want to shop and enjoy and peruse, you can always visit us on Etsy, Kawaii Universe on Etsy. And for anything else you just visit kawaiiuniverse.com and pretty much you can enjoy everything that you see there thank you so much you're so My passionate pleasure. about it it's, it's I love great what i do and i hope everybody can see us at some point i know a lot of you have seen us in other points but thank you you're welcome arigato sayonara at Florida Supercon at the Miami Beach Convention Center and here with another talented artist. This is really cool. You can see her and I'm going to show you some of the work and then she's going to talk a little bit about it. And there's something really cool. You see stickers, a lot of buttons. It's actually Angelica. And the first thing I'm going to say is, she's only 15 years old. <laughs> Look at this amazing stuff. She has her, this is her first event, something like this, with Florida Supercon. And the stuff that she's doing, like the, the future of our youth is really promising with someone like Angelica. So we have Abrito Art, correct? Yes. And tell us about what it is, your form of discipline, your medium for art. So basically my art is, uh, I started recreationally two years ago and I started drawing every single day all the time until one day I just realized, okay, so this is something I want to do with my life then. Um, and then I came across an artist at a convention at the youth fair in Florida and her name's Kawaii Universe. She's actually at this convention right now. I just spoke to her. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Kawaii, I learned Kawaii is cute. Yes. That's what that is and all. And she had some great stuff too. So. Yes. Absolutely. So I saw her selling at the youth fair and I'm like thinking about this one day in my probability and statistics class and I'm just like, so how can I go out and to a place and sell my art? And I googled this, Florida Supercon came up, a day later I bought the table and then I started panicking because I had to get stuff together. Uh, but it all worked out. Stuff is like selling very well and everybody's loving my art. Everyone's so nice and receptive of everything I do. So I really appreciate it. Tell us about some of the pieces and, and what, I mean, yeah. T-shirts and all. This is this is all. Is it uh, paint? Is it drawings? Tell us a little bit about what you specialize in. So I do a lot of different kinds of things. My main thing is original designs and illustrations. I don't do fan art because I don't like the idea of mass producing stuff based on somebody else's creative works because I wouldn't want somebody doing that for me. So I design like on my own characters on my pieces. I have like different mediums I use. I do digital, traditional, watercolor, and Copic markers. So like for my buttons, it's a mix of traditional um, watercolor as well as digital for the border and for and both And this is buttons. one that was been, this one here has been yes. really good. People have been... Uh, Best seller. And we see people wearing it and walking around actually, so it's pretty awesome to be, see people like with my art and just the idea of people when they buy prints and my framed originals to have the idea. Special announcement, special announcement. <laughs> um, just the idea of people having my art in their homes and like sharing it with their friends and whatever is just so amazing to me and I really like, I'm humbled by that. 
When did you know, first of all, that you had this talent and then the passion came out with this? So it actually started in eighth grade, in no, seventh grade, in one of my art classes that I started drawing some trees with ink. And I started drawing a bunch of trees all the time. Very random thing to draw, but I love drawing them. And so I did that all through eighth grade. And then ninth grade, I got a drawing tablet, so I started drawing digitally. And then that's when it exploded. I would spend hours upon hours every single day just drawing. And I kind of threw other things aside. I wouldn't go out like when friends asked me and stuff like that, because I'd be like, oh, I am busy. I got stuff to do. Continues drawing. <laughs> Where do you draw your inspirations from? Uh, there's a lot of artists that like inspire me, like uh, Destiny Blue on a website called DeviantArt, which I visit every so often, but I just really love her artwork. She's so inspiring and she does conventions like this, as well as Kauai University. She was one of the first artists I ever learned the name of and started getting into the whole community and whatever. And I want to look here because we got the special Mondays shirts. And we can all feel like that on a Monday. <laughs> so that's really cool. And you have prints also that are here and magnets and stickers and the bookmarks. And what I noticed too, and tell me if I'm right or wrong, and you'll obviously, it's, it's your heart, it's your inspiration. Some of them, it's, some of them have a dark side and the bright side together. Yeah, so a lot of my artworks I put my own emotion into, so it depends how I'm feeling that day. And actually, and she'll tell you that it's completely true, that whenever I'm drawing something scary, I'll make like scary faces. And whenever I'm drawing something funny, I'll like smile and be happy or whatever, because that's, I put so much emotion into my art, and I think it really shows, and on a relatable level too, so like, yeah, that kind of stuff shows in the work. So this is really good. Actually, like in a in a darker part of this year, when I was a little bit stressed out. So it's a girl who found a fox and an animal and followed it into the forest, and then she's lost in the forest and whatever. So even though she's lost, there's still some sort of like hope and color in it. So that's another thing with the work. So no matter what, no matter where you're lost or whatever, you always find yourself, even if it's in a beautiful forest. Or is there a place for the public to check out any of your work or anything like that? Where yes. should they do that? I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and DeviantArt at, at Art, And I also have my very own website, abridoart.com.